Thank you. We now move to our first item of business, which is topical questions, and I call question number one, Claire Baker. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to tackle hate crimes against LGBTI people. First Minister. Presiding officer, I would like uh, firstly today to extend, as you have done, the thoughts and sympathies of the people of Scotland to the families and friends of all those whose lives were so cruelly and tragically taken from them in Orlando in the early hours of Sunday morning. We also send our very best wishes to those who sustained injuries in this attack. The attack on the Pulse nightclub was, as the United States government has made clear, an act of terror. But it was also a hate crime. It was the worst targeted attack on LGBTI people that we have seen in the Western world in recent times. It is therefore vital, in addition to playing our part in the fight against terrorism, that we also stand shoulder to shoulder with the LGBTI community here at home and indeed across the world. Scotland has made great progress in becoming a fair and equal society. We are considered to be one of the most progressive countries in Europe in terms of LGBTI equality. This government, this parliament, and I believe the people of Scotland firmly believe that there is no place in Scotland for prejudice or discrimination and that everyone must be treated fairly and equally. Tragically, the events in Orlando at the weekend show that there are some who do not share that belief, who prefer to hate and to do so violently. And yet we should also take heart and comfort from seeing people across the world, people of all faiths and none, gathering together to express solidarity with those killed and injured and solidarity with the LGBTI community as a whole. However, these tragic events and indeed the latest hate crime figures for Scotland published on Friday last week do remind us that there is no room for complacency. I therefore thank Claire Baker for her focus on the actions that the Scottish Government and the Scottish society uh, must continue to take to tackle LGBTI hate crime and indeed all forms of hate crime. Uh, we have already implemented strong laws that create new offences and aggravations. We will continue to work closely with Police Scotland and with others to encourage increased reporting of hate crimes. And we will also do everything possible to ensure that perpetrators are brought to justice. Above all else, presiding officer, I think we should all take the opportunity today to reaffirm the kind of country and indeed the kind of world we are determined to live in. Uh, one where hate or hate crime, whether on the basis of race, faith, disability, sexual orientation or gender identity, will simply not be tolerated. Claire Baker. Um, can I associate the Scottish Labour Party to those remarks from the First Minister? Um, all of us watched in shock at the weekend as the news from Orlando came up a dreadful crime that was driven by homophobia and hatred. I know that the thoughts and prayers from across the chamber go to the families and friends who have suffered great loss and to those who are still in hospital. Um, across the UK, we are seeing demonstrations of solidarity and this chamber can be proud of the work and the legislation we have undertaken to make Scotland a more inclusive and tolerant society, not least the Equal Marriage Act passed last year. However, we must always be alert and the Scottish crime figure statistics that were released on Friday shows that in the last year there has been a 20% increase in charges of hate crimes related to sexual orientation. Can I therefore ask the First Minister, in light of this increase, what action the government is taking to redouble efforts to tackle violence and aggression towards people based on their sexuality and to support those who are coming forward to report crime? First Minister. Well, can I thank Claire Baker for uh, her comments and indeed for her question. I think she is absolutely right to point to the figures published last Friday, which underline the point I made in my original answer. There is no room for complacency. In those uh, figures, uh, we did see a 20% increase in hate crimes based on sexual orientation. Uh, and we also saw in those figures that transgender hate crime is at its highest level since 2009, uh, since the legislation was introduced. So that underlines the importance of continuing the work we're doing, but also redoubling those efforts. Uh, the Scottish Government will continue to take action and indeed increase our action across a range of fronts. Education and prevention remains of paramount 
importance. Uh, so too is ensuring that we are supporting, uh, where necessary, with funding LGBTI organisations so that they can work with individuals and with the community as a whole. Indeed, uh, later this week, the Equality Secretary will make an announcement on future funding to achieve our goal of a Scotland where equality is a reality. Uh, our independent advisory group on hate crime, prejudice and community cohesion will also report over the summer. Uh, we also need to continue to take action to ensure that people have the confidence to report hate crimes so that our justice system can then do its job in making sure that perpetrators are brought to justice. So across a whole range of issues, the Scottish Government is alert to the risks that uh, many people uh, live with and face, sometimes on a daily basis. Uh, but I'll end uh, with the comment I've already made. Scotland is making progress in becoming a fairer and more equal society, but we will only achieve that goal if we also face up to the areas where there is clearly work still to be done. Uh, and I give a, an assurance and a commitment to Parliament today that this government will do that. Claire Baker. Um, I very much welcome the First Minister's response and can I assure her that when it comes to tackling such behaviour across Scotland she has the force, full support of the Scottish Labour Party. I accept that it's always difficult to fully understand the hate crime figures. When the crime stats go down we welcome the fact they're reducing and when they go up we welcome more people reporting the crimes. To fully tackle LGBTI crime, we must fully understand the figures. And on Friday, the Scottish Government published another report that analysed the breakdown on religiously aggravated offending. Uh, will the First Minister ensure that a similar breakdown is available to LGBTI hate crimes in Scotland so that we can better understand the nature of these crimes? First Minister. Uh, yes, I can uh, give an assurance that we will uh, give consideration to the, the further analysis and breakdown that we are able to do so that we better understand those figures. Uh, that's something that uh, the Cabinet Secretary will uh, look at specifically and I'll make sure that uh, she continues to liaise with members across the party about uh, the progress on that. It is important that we understand the figures and uh, Claire Baker rightly makes the point that often in these cases an increase in offences uh, while it's something to be deeply, deeply regretted, will come about because of an increase in the number of people coming forward and reporting these crimes. That is something we must continue to encourage. But the deeper our understanding of these figures uh, and what lies behind these figures, the more targeted and effective our actions to tackle uh, hate crime in all its forms uh, will be. So uh, we'll continue to take action on that front and continue to keep Parliament updated. Ruth Davidson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The events in Orlando were an act of terror, a homophobic attack directed at the city's LGBTI community and perpetrated in a space that was designed to offer sanctuary, acceptance and enjoyment. A safe space to show love that was violated by extreme hate. In Glasgow, London and in cities across the world, we stood in solidarity with Orlando last night and this Parliament stands in solidarity again today. We have stood here too often in recent years as such extreme hate has shocked us all. But we know too that our own country has not been immune in the past from attacks born of a twisted ideology. And we also know that without leadership, fear can lead to anger or even reprisal. So does the First Minister agree with me that we must continue to work with our young people to push them away from extremism and that we reaffirm our commitment to upholding the common values of tolerance, freedom and acceptance within and between all of Scotland's communities? First Minister. Uh, yes, I do. And can I uh, welcome Ruth Davidson's uh, comments? I'm aware she and indeed I think Kezia Dugdale were in London uh, last night showing solidarity there. There has, of course, been commentary in the media about whether this was a terror attack or a homophobic hate crime. In truth, it was both of these things, and we must be very clear about that. Um, I absolutely agree uh, with the point that was made about the importance of leadership uh, and not thinking that we in Scotland are somehow immune uh, from the uh, type of event uh, and what lies behind those events that we saw in Orlando at the weekend. Um, it is vital that we work uh, with our young people in particular, as I said to Claire Baker, the importance of education uh, and through education prevention is of paramount importance. It's also important that we work with all of our communities, our faith communities and all of our other communities as well. I have, as I'm sure uh, others have across the chamber, been heartened at the voices in our Muslim community making clear that their horror at what happened in Orlando is just as strong as the horror that any of us feel. But we mustn't be complacent, we mustn't 
assume that these are the problems only of other people. That's why the range of activity that I've already spoken about is so important and it is vital that we join together within this parliament and this parliament joins with all sections of Scottish society to say, send that message and do what is required to be done to turn that message into reality. Hate and hate crime will not be, cannot be tolerated in Scotland. Presenting officer, our thoughts and prayers are with all those affected by the attacks in Orlando. We all across this chamber and across this country stand shoulder to shoulder with them, regardless of race, religion, gender or sexuality. This tragedy comes during the holy month of Ramadan, when millions of Muslims across the world are making personal sacrifices to recognise and learn about those less fortunate. Like the First Minister has said, they are saying loudly and peacefully, not in our name. Will the First Minister therefore join me in sending a message to the spreaders of hate that we will not allow your intolerance, we will not allow your mindlessness, we will not allow your heartlessness to divide us or indeed to define us? First Minister. Can I thank Anas Sarwar for his uh, comments and I know how uh, deeply and sincerely he feels uh, those comments. As he rightly says, uh, we are right now uh, in the, the middle, not quite the middle, but during the, the holy month of Ramadan, which is a, a period of peace and sacrifice uh, for all those who adhere to the Islamic faith. Um, and I think, and I've said it in this chamber uh, on previous occasions when all too often, sadly, we've uh, come here together to reflect on terrorist uh, atrocities. Uh, I've said before and, and will say again, I, I am acutely aware because of uh, the, the many Muslim constituents I represent uh, of how uh, not just the fact that the Muslim community feel the same horror as we do, but often that horror is added to by the sense that somehow they are being held responsible uh, for acts that they are not culpable for. In many respects, the Islamic faith is as much a victim of this twisted ideology um, as, as others uh, are because it is a perversion uh, of Islam. And that message has to be one uh, that we take loudly and clearly. Uh, and we must make clear uh, to people of all faiths, to people of no faiths, uh, that this kind of intolerance Hatred will not be tolerated. And that is a message that I hope, as we have done so often in the past, we will continue as a parliament and as a society to join together uh, to voice very strongly and very loudly. Patrick Harvey. Can I uh, add the support of the Scottish Green Party to your own comments and those of other speakers regarding the atrocity in Orlando? Many of us joined together in Glasgow as well yesterday. Uh, I've only ever felt uh, joy seeing the rainbow flag on occasion flown from the city chambers, and I can't quite express how it felt to see it at half-mast. The First Minister spoke about uh, the vision uh, of seeing no place in Scotland for prejudice and discrimination. That hasn't been achieved yet. There are, sadly, still people, including young people, subjected to the ideology that says certain sexual orientations or gender identities are inherent moral defects. The First Minister has described herself as a huge supporter of the Thai campaign, Time for Inclusive Education. How long does the First Minister think it will be before all schools in Scotland actively promote the equality and dignity of all of their young people, including LGBTI young people? First Minister. Well, firstly, can I uh, share Patrick Harvey's uh, sense that he described of uh, feeling an overwhelming uh, sense of sadness seeing the rainbow flag uh, fly at half-mast uh, yesterday. It flew at half-mast over the Scottish Government headquarter building yesterday. Um, I think that was a, an appropriate mark of respect, but it is not something we uh, want to, to see again. I want to see that flag uh, fly uh, proudly, as its uh, name suggests that it should on happy and uplifting and joyous occasions, as I hope it will do again before too long. Uh, Patrick Harvey is right. Our aspirations uh, of Scotland being a place of fairness, justice and equality uh, are not yet achieved. Scotland is not unique. I'm not sure there is a single country in the world that could stand and say that that aspiration, that uh, ambition, that vision has been achieved. But we must make sure that we continue uh, to take the action that will allow us to achieve it. And that includes on education. I don't want uh, to live in a country, let alone uh, be the first minister of a country where any uh, young person 
uh, has to feel uh, somehow that because of their sexual orientation or their gender identity, they are subject to judgment or made to feel uh, in any way less than any other individual in our society. Uh, I have uh, given a commitment, as Patrick Harvey is aware to working as government with the Campaign for Inclusive Education. I'm not going to stand here and uh, off the top of my head give timescales because I don't think that would be an appropriate thing to do. But what I will do is give a commitment uh, that I, as First Minister, this government will continue to work with campaigns like that to ensure that whether it's in a school or any other part of our society, the environment for young people growing up uh, regardless of their sexual orientation, regardless of their gender identity, uh, is one in which they feel comfortable and one in which they are able to fulfil their potential. That's what we should all aspire to as a country. William Rennie. On behalf of the Liberal Democrats, can I express our deep sadness at the horrific events in Orlando? I agree with the First Minister when she says there was some degree of comfort in this darkness with all the, the crowds gathering together in the cities not just in the United Kingdom, but right across the world. Does the First Minister agree with me, however, that I think one of the most powerful signals that we could send in this context is to accelerate our programmes on equality for all of the LGBTI community? We've all got common programmes which we want to deliver in this Parliament. So let's use this to accelerate those programmes so we can send the strongest possible signal to these haters and terrorists, that we will not be intimidated. First Minister. Well, I uh, am absolutely happy to agree with that sentiment. I hope I've made clear in my previous answers today that the Scottish Government is not just determined to continue our work on equality, but to accelerate the progress of that. And we will certainly uh, make sure that we use the reflection of what's happened in the last few days to uh, enable us to do so. Uh, I want all of Parliament uh, right across this chamber to be part of that and we are open to ideas and suggestions about how we pick up the pace of progress or indeed uh, whether there is more we can do in any area uh, to accelerate uh, the, the progress towards the, the vision that Patrick Harvey spoke about. So any member in any party in this chamber should feel absolutely free to come forward with ideas and suggestions and they have a commitment from me that the government will consider them seriously and carefully. Rona Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what preparedness it has engaged in in light of the outrage in Orlando for Pride marches and other LGBTI events in Scotland. First Minister. Well, obviously the police will continue to make uh, their own assessments and make their own preparations to ensure uh, that Pride marches uh, can happen and uh, happen safely uh, and happen in a way that all of those attending them can do so uh, and enjoy the occasions, uh, the, the uplifting and joyous occasions that they are intended to be. The Scottish Government will continue to make sure that we are in close liaison uh, with the police on all of these matters. Uh, of course, we will see uh, a number of Pride marches taking place uh, in Scotland and indeed elsewhere in the, the coming weeks and uh, perhaps something all of us uh, can do uh, to remember uh, and to pay respect to those who died in Orlando but also to show uh, in very real terms our solidarity with the LGBTI community is to turn up and take part uh, in a pride march somewhere uh, in Scotland and if all of us do that then that will be a very vivid representation of this parliament really standing shoulder to shoulder. Thank you that ends questions number one and move on to question two topical questions called John Finney. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports of concerns about the threat to individuals' privacy arising from the surveillance activities of the Scottish Recording Centre. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. Uh, this Government takes the protection of our citizens' civil liberties extremely seriously, and we are clear that investigatory powers should only be used when it is necessary and proportionate to do so. But we must always uh, balance the protection of those civil, fundamental civil liberties uh, with the need to ensure that our law enforcement bodies have effective powers to investigate and deal with serious organised crime. The interception of communications is governed by the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act 2000. All matters pertaining to the interception of communications are independently overseen by the Interception of Communications Commissioner. That inspection regime includes an annual inspection of Police Scotland's activities in this area. John Finney. Um, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that uh, reply. Cabinet Secretary, there are distinct human rights obligations for the police under the Human Rights Act. And the Scotland Act makes clear that any decisions both by the Scottish Government and the Scottish Parliament in relation to policing must be compliant with Convention rights. 
Now, Cabinet Secretary, no one would for one minute suggest you interfere in operational matters. However, you are obliged to uphold the Human Rights Act and the Scotland Act, so people would reasonably expect that you are able to confirm that all Police Scotland operations, and indeed all police operations in Scotland, have a legal basis which respects the Human Rights Act and the Scotland Act. Can you confirm that, please? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I can confirm to the member that uh, it's important that the actions which are taken by uh, Police Scotland and other law enforcement bodies within Scotland are compliant with ECHR. Additionally, the legislation under which they operate with the powers which we provide them with uh, as a parliament uh, also need to be compliant with ECHR. That's why it's important that we recognise that every aspect of our law enforcement bodies are implementing that approach with the powers that we provide them with. The member will also be aware that in the oath uh, for uh, constables within Police Scotland that human rights it forms part and upstand upholding human rights is a key part of the oath which all officers within Police Scotland uh, take. But we are very clear that the legislation that governs any areas around interception of communications uh, and other powers that Police Scotland have uh, need to be compliant with uh, human rights legislation. John Ferry. Um, again, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that reply, and he will be aware of my long-standing interest in the relationship between his post and UK issues. And we learn that GCHQ feel that they don't, for instance, need the investigative powers uh, legislation. That, of course, is because they're doing it anyway. But nothing absolves your post, uh, Cabinet Secretary, from defending the privacy of those living in Scotland. And that needs that you, means that you need to have an understanding of these issues. Is all police work in Scotland, including liaison collaborative work with external agencies, carried out in accordance with a strict Scottish legal framework and policy framework? And will you publish that framework in respect of the surveillance regime? Cameron. Well, President Officer, you recognise that the uh, operation of GCHQ is a matter for the UK Government and the way in which they undertake their responsibilities. There are uh, laws and regulations which are applied to GCHQ and how they operate in obtaining information as well. And uh, I certainly would not condone any practices which operated out with the, uh, the law or were conducted in an inhu inhumane uh, way. That's not to say this is a case in this particular set of circumstances, but the legislation which pertains to the interception of communications for Police Scotland is based on the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act uh, 2000. Then there's a clear process that uh, Police Scotland have to go through in order to exercise those powers. So, for example, when it comes to matters relating to the interception of communications, uh, warrants must be sought from Scottish Government ministers, largely myself, uh, before they can undertake such actions. And there are two very clear statutory provisions that need to be satisfied uh, in that particular matter on, on the basis of necessity and proportionality in these matters, and they are considered in every single individual case. And uh, Police Scotland are inspected by OCO on in an annual basis to ensure that they are complying with the law and the regulations which pertain to the Regulation for Investigatory Powers Act to ensure that they are operating within the law. Lee MacArthur. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm whether he's asked for assurances uh, that the data processed by the SRC was acquired lawfully, and if so, were those assurances forthcoming? Uh, and is he confident that the information handled by the SRC was held in accordance uh, not just with human rights uh, requirements, but under the uh, data protection rules as well? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I suspect that the member is referring to information that was passed by GCHQ, uh, which has been suggested in the press over the course of the weekend. As I've already made clear, the operation and the way in which GCHQ operate is a matter for the UK Government and the Home Secretary in particular. They obviously have to operate within the legal confines and also the regulations which pertain to the operation of GCHQ. What I can uh, assure the member of is that in relation to the operation of the powers which Police Scotland have under the Investigatory Powers Act, that they are inspected by IOCO and that they consider whether they are compliant or not, and no concerns have been brought to our attention by IOCO. So I'm confident that Police Scotland are operating within the legal framework uh, which has been set by, uh, in part, this Parliament and also by the UK Parliament when it comes to the interception of communications.